Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss disclosures for investments. Under US GAAP, companies are required to provide additional information about investment in debt and equity securities that must be disclosed in the entity's financial statements. What does that mean? It means after we provide the numbers on the financial statements, we need to disclose additional information, additional disclosure. Those disclosures are typically listed in the notes that accompanied the financial statements. Now, why? Why do we provide those notes? Oftentimes, we need to clarify what's on the financial statement. How did we come up with these figures? Why? Because investors or creditors are interested in having more information in order to do what? In order to assess the amount, timing, and uncertainty related to cash flows. So they want to know how are we computing our fair value? What is the expected future cash flow? What's the expected future inflow of cash from our investments? Or we need to give them enough information to be able to make those decisions. That's why we need to provide additional information, disclosure in the notes about those investments. And this is exactly what we'll do in this session. I will break it into two components. We'll look at disclosures for debt securities and we'll look at disclosures for equity securities. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Starting with disclosures for debt securities. And when we think of debt securities, think of bonds. It doesn't have to be bonds. We could have loans as an investment, but bonds is typically what we think of when we think about disclosure for debt securities. The first thing we have to do is list the categories, the various categories that we could have under debt securities. And we could have three categories under debt securities. And this should be a review because you should have learned about this in your investment chapter health to maturities or htm those securities that we intend to hold and we have the ability to hold so although we we say these are health to maturity securities in the notes we explain what does it mean health to maturities and we explain that those health to maturities are reported at amortized cost those securities are not reported at fair value also we have trading securities those securities are bought and held for a short period of time for the purpose of selling them in the near future to make a profit. And we have the third category available for sale. Available for sale, they are not trading, they are not held to maturity, someplace in between. They are not any of the above. So held to maturities is HTM, trading securities is TS, and available for sale. Now, what do we have to disclose in addition to the categories? Well, the, the trading and available for sale, they are reported at fair value. Well, we have to have a fair value disclosure. Entities must disclose. So simply put, I said health to maturities are reported at cost. The other two are reported at fair value. Well, how do we come up with fair value? We must disclose the fair value of each class of instrument, including debt securities, as well as any related carrying amount that's reported on the balance sheet. So we have to show the carrying amount. We have to show the fair value. And the difference will be either a gain or a loss. We have to show for health to maturities the amortized cost, any gross unrealized gain or loss, and fair value. Although it's showing at, it still be showing at amortized cost on the balance sheet. Sale and transfer. Well, the accounting policies for recognizing gains and losses. What are the what's the policy from the sale or transfer of debt securities? We should disclose this. Method of interest computation. How did we compute the interest, accrued interest on these bonds? Impairment. Sometimes the investment loses value, permanent loses value. How do we determine whether an investment lost value or not? And how did we come up with that, with that decision, with that number? Also, gross unrealized loss or unrealized gain for that matter. But usually losses are more important because, you know, we are being conservative. The aggregate amount of gross unrealized loss and the fair value of related securities, along with the length of time, we have those securities with the continuous loss position. To simply put more information about our losses. Also, we need to show 
any other than temporary impairment. So we have temporary impairment that we don't recover and other than temporary, the criteria that we use to determine what's something other than temporary. Temporary means, that's it. Uh, uh, temporary means it's for a period of time and it's gonna recover. Other than temporary, it means it's a permanent. It's not gonna go away. Once we write it down, we don't expect to write it up. Income recognition, when we have, when we have debt, we're gonna have interest, usually not dividend. Now, the process of recognizing this interest and the treatment of any premium or discount, because remember, when we purchase a bond, we could have a premium or a discount. Again, when we talk about fair value, if, if the bond is publicly traded, that's fine, which will be usually level one. But if we computed the fair value differently using level two or level, or level three, especially level three, we need to disclose how exactly did we come up with that computation. Also, risk concentration. Are we are we exposing ourselves to only specific type of bonds in one industry? Information about the concentration of credit risk within the investment portfolio, including the identity of issuers that represent a significant portion of the portfolio. If 40% of our bonds in the real estate industry, we need to disclose this. This is considered a credit risk. Also the maturities, this is important. The maturity value of amortized cost of that securities classify but maturity date when are they going to mature within one year one to five five to ten because we want to know when they mature when these investments mature we're going to get our money back it helps determine the future cash inflow because when they mature you go back you you present the bond and you'll get your money back remember this is a bond that's an investment that's not debt now let's move to the equity securities equities mean stocks equity investment good thing they should be measured at fair value what changes recognizes in net income. Um, again, when we say equity investment, we don't, we don't, we are not referring to the equity method because those are treated differently. And we are not referring to anything that do, does with consolidation when we own more than 50%. But generally speaking, at equity securities, other than the equity method that result in consolidation is reported at fair value and the change in fair value is reported in net income. Simply put, whether we have a gain or a loss, it's reported in net income income now disclosure what do we need to disclose fair value fair value disclosure how do we come up with that fair value if the stock if the equity is publicly traded then it's easy it's level one it's pretty much self-explanatory if it's level two and level three especially level three we need to talk a little bit more about how we came up with this valuation valuation techniques and input, input if the fair value is determined using significant unabsorbable input which is level three now if you don't know what level one two and three there's a separate recording for that on how to determine fair value i'm assuming you are familiar with level three otherwise go to fair value lesson and determine and learn about level one two and three when it comes to level three a description of the valuation technique and the absorbable input. What did you use? Did you use cash flow? How did you come up with that cash flow? Which interest rate you used? How long is the period? How did you come up with that interest rate compared to what? Did you use third party information? Tell us all about this. Results, the financial statements must also reflect the changes in the fair value investment and the current earnings. What's the effect of the fair value changes to the current earning? This include both realized gain and losses as well as unrealized gain and losses. Remember, if we sold the investments, it's realized. We wanna show this separately on the effect of on income versus the unrealized gain and losses. Also, when we have investments, we have no interest, usually dividend. Dividend from the equity securities must be reported separately from gains and losses on the income statement. So we have to show dividend separately and tell you the amount versus the gains and the losses. We also have to show any sale, transfer, and impairment. Disclose the policies about when we sell, how do we report? Obviously, when we sell, it goes to the income statement. And when we transfer from one category to the other, we have to disclose this. If we, what is our, our policy for impairment? What's impairment is when the investment loses value. Well, what is the permanent, especially when it's permanent? Uh, it's, it's a permanent, means it's not, we don't expect it to recover. Just like with bonds, we have to have risk concentration, information about concentration of risk in the equity investment. Again, if we are, if we have stocks and technology, a large portion, well, we have to disclose this. This way the investors know that within our investment, there's a high risk of exposure to the technology industry. Also, if we have any investment that we consider strategic investment, it means we, we, we bought this to have a relationship with the with the company that we are that we are that we are working with. This is called strategic investment. This fact should be stated as well. Other disclosure, 
will be the cumulative effect adjustments. If applicable, companies must disclose the nature and reason for any reclassification out of AOCI and the cumulative adjustment to retained earnings. So if when you sell an investment, sometimes you might have to take loss or gain from o AOCI and put it into net income, which will make it to retained earning. You have to explain this in details, how you did this. Also, roll forward of fair value. So fair value in year one, how do you come up from year one to year two? You know, starting with year one, what are the changes to come up with year two? Basically, a rollover of fair value equity if the, these are using significant unabsorbable input. And when we say un unabsorbable input, it means we don't have we don't have enough data, uh, public data. We used our own data. And those investments are risky because you are using your own data. What else do we need to know about investments? There's something called fair value practicability, practicability exception. In other words, sometimes we cannot find the fair value. And GAAP gives us an exception. So under EAS GAAP, the fair value practicability exception is a provision that allows entities not to measure certain investments or financial instrument at fair, fair value. Why not? Because you're supposed to mention it, to report at fair value. Because it's not practical to do so. You don't have enough data. Not a public data, not observable, not unobservable data. This typically applies when an entity cannot determine. Just, we have an asset that's so unique that we cannot find the fair value for it. So, we cannot determine the fair value without incurring excessive cost or when there is no observable market prices or other market information to help us measure the fair value. Now bear in mind this, this is a high threshold that typically require an entity to exhaust all reasonable effort in order to value an investment. It seldom happens. I mean it has to be so unique that there is no fair value. The entity must be unable to obtain the information necessary to, ap to apply the fair value technique with significant reliability. Why? Again, the cost could be very high in relationship to the benefit, or simply put, there's lack of a market or other circumstances that make estimating the fair value highly uncertain. So you're better off without the fair market value. So what does that mean to the investors? You decide your own fair value and make your decision based on that. That's what we're telling the investors. We're not risking that because we don't have enough information and we're telling you this. So what do we do for these investments when an entity elect the fair value exception, the investment is typically recorded at cost. Then what we do, we do look for impairment. Impairment is when we think it lost value and subsequent adjustment for observable price changes in, or in, in an orderly transaction for identical or similar investment for same issuer. And we keep monitoring if there's anything that we can do to look at other fair value. But if it lost value permanently, we impair it. Other disclosure, Using this exception, we must disclose the reason why the fair value cannot be measured. We have to spell out why is it cost. Not enough data. It's a unique investment. How, how did we come up with that decision? We have to let them know. Also, when we impair it, well, even though fair value measured may not be practical, an entity is still required to assess it, as I said, for impairment. Impairment means if you think lost value, that you would know. If there's an indication of impairment, because you know how much you paid for it. The cost is known. If you think it went below cost, that's impairment, then you should know this if it lost value. So when if it's impairment, it, it hits your earnings, it hits your loss. But the problem is you cannot report it at market because you don't know what the market that you know, you should know when it lost value permanently. That's what they're saying. Now it's important to know that the fair value exception is not intended to be used frequently. It's reserved for cases where the fair value is genuinely difficult to determine. Bottom line, FASB would rather that you report your investment at fair value. Unless there's an exception, you can fall back to that exception. So why fair value? Because it gives us a preferred measurement. It tells us exactly how much is something is worth today. And this is, and we like that. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at MCQs, additional resources. That's going to help you do what? Prepare for your CPA exam. Invest in yourself. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, Stay safe.